Hello, gorgeous! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is the third week of our Peach Doba Challenge video. We can only fit six paintings in this one because we don't want to make the video too long and we want to spread out evenly for the last three videos that we have. We are trying out a new editing style so you might notice some difference between this one and the last two videos. So we hope you like this one. Enjoy! The first form of the week is shell. So as you can see, I'm blocking the background with different shades of green and I want it to be loose so that the focus is on the snail and mushroom. I used a color green but this one I added too much blue so I'm trying to save it by blending it out and then I added more greens, different shades. Then I mostly focus on the direction of the brush because I want a really nice texture for the background. I painted the main color of the subject first, bringing out the shape and form. You can see me jumping between the snail and mushroom because I can't see the colors accurately after focusing on one subject for a while. So I have to alternate between them, rest my eye. Doing it alternately will allow me to see the color and value more accurately because I have a fresh pair of eyes. I use a big brush because I don't want to go into details. Actually, I don't have a high expectation for this painting but I think it turns out better than I thought because it looks really realistic and then the mushroom and the snail really pops out. So I kind of liked it. So I use a small brush here to paint the tentacles and eyes of the snail. So I pushed the mushroom value here even more by making the shadow really dark and blend it out smoothly. After the base is done, I started to add the patterns on the mushroom, going into the details. I love mushrooms. I like to paint them, I like to eat them, I like to look at them. I think they're very cute. And I really enjoy painting these little spots on it. But people with trepophobia, I'm really sorry you can skip this part because it will look a bit disturbing. Next, I move on to the foreground. I use thicker paint to create depth and texture for the grass. I put more yellow to differentiate it from the background and also I added some dirt to make it realistic. I don't have the footage on the snail shell because I forgot to press the record button. <laughs> so the final thing that I did is adding highlights and textures to the snail body to make it stand out. Actually, I'm really afraid of slimy animals. Not afraid, but it makes me uncomfortable. Like boneless animals like snake, um, snail. Uh, that's all I can think of now. So when I'm painting this, actually I paint it really fast because I cannot look at it for too long. It makes my hair stand. <laughs> So this is day 15 shell. Next is day 16 trunk and I decided to paint a baby elephant. So I tried to sketch the outline of the elephant. I did it two times because the first one is too short. Next, I move to the background and I use a very warm and wash out green because I want the subject which is the elephant to stand out more since it's a dark color as usual I painted the main color first and then I will add the shadows and highlights accordingly this way it helps me to define the shape I use a small brush and the darkest color to sketch the outline of the elephant as you can see right here to make it more 3D looking and 
then I added more shades and details on the face, like the wrinkles on the trunk and the eyes. I added some warm tones to the elephant to match the background. By doing this, it will make it look more natural, like the elephant is actually in the scene. Because if you can notice, when we are in a place with yellow lighting, then our skin will have yellow. So it's the same theory. Then I realized the shape of the legs are weird, so I refine it with white so that it's easier for me to go over it again with the background color. In this part, I added highlights, but it was too bright so I have to lighten the elephant to make it look more natural. What I'm doing here is that I define the wrinkles by putting more dark and light values in between them as you can see I keep changing the wrinkles because it looks fake and unnatural to me so I keep changing it until it looks okay and sometimes I think I make it too much so I reduce it moving on I did a second layer to the background to lighten up because I think it's too dark and also this way it will create a contrast because the elephant is really low in value low in value means it has mostly dark colors in it i actually wanted the lights to come from the back of the elephant so i pushed the background even lighter but i think it didn't show the backlit effect I added more colors to the ground to make it more dimensional, creating more depth and also color vibrate a bit so it looks interesting. Then the last thing I did is adding details to the grass in front to bring out the depth. So here's the final painting for day 16 elephant. The next prompt is snow. I'm getting the placement of the oral painting first. I start from the bottom, the foreground, by drawing out all the shapes there. By defining the darkest value first will be much easier for me later on working on the painting. Then I started sketching out the shape of the house. This is very hard because it's perspective and I'm doing it freehand. I even block in the color of the house before I realized I made a mistake. The proportion of the house is wrong so I covered it up and did it once again. I always find perspective challenging. Straight lines also because my hands always shiver. So this took me quite a while to figure it out. Right here, I start to sketch out the tree trunks. This is way easier compared to the house because it's an organic shape and I don't have to make a perfect straight line. Yay! Then, I block out the background and overall colors of this painting, looking at the big picture first. Blue is the main color of this painting. It's funny how it's snowing, but it's not just white. Color theory is crazy, but it's so fun to explore and play around with it. I mix ultramarine blue and burnt umber to get the darkest color for the river. And I keep the lightest value for the roof because that's where the sun hits. Trees are one of the hardest things to paint for me, so I always start with the trunk and branches. I'm filling in the trunks right now, defining the shape with the middle tone of the trunk. I just want to get 
the placement right for now and then I started to add bigger branches with the same brush and same color also just to get the placement right I added some snow on the top because I want a foggy effect since it's snowing. I lightly brush over the branches and trunk with the background blue. Then I went in with the darkest shade for the trunk to block in the shadow color. Then I added branches with the smallest brush I have and also bring out the darkest value of the trees and house since they are the same color. I really need a steady hand for this so I'm really nervous when I'm doing it. Next, I move on to the details of the house by adding horizontal lines to show the exact material of the house. I want to make it look like is a wood house. Then I proceed to the window and also added some snow on them. Straight lines again! No! I hate it! But I can't do this. I'm doing it very slowly and steady. And finally, I added details of snow to all the surfaces and touch up some parts that I feel the need to. The lightest part of the trees will be the snow. This will really bring the trees to life and make it look more three-dimensional. Then I repeat this to every single branches with short strokes to create Textures on tree. I also make some frozen grass at the bottom of the tree. Then I also added some snow in the river, just a little. Then I went back with the darker shade for the tree to further define them. So, here's the final painting for snow. I feel like the proportion of the house is still off, but I think it's good enough. The prom is wing, and I have to be honest, this painting is a big challenge for me because I am bad at human, and I always avoid doing it, but I decided to give it a try for this challenge. So I started with sketching out the subject first, and then I proceed with the wings, painting the main colors too. Painting the main colors, bringing out the form. I use a very very light shade of grey for the upper wing to block in the base color. And then I use a darker shade of grey for the lower wings because it's facing downwards and in the shadow. This will help me to know where the wings are positioned at. Then I move to the clothes because it's a similar grey but in a cooler shade. It's more bluish compared to the wings. At this point, I'm just trying to figure out the placement and not into the details yet. And then the next thing I do is the background. I use black so that it will contrast with the wings which is the main thing that I want to focus on. I do it very carefully to carve out the shape of the wings and the angel head. Then I block in the blonde hair with different shades of the yellow with a small brush. Then I start to go into more details on the upper wing by putting in the right value. I also try to bring out the feather shape individually with the dark color for the shadow. My priority is to make sure the value is right here so it will be 
easier for me to judge later on by referring back to this wing for the correct value. I also added more details on the wings. You can see the feathers now. I play around with the brush strokes, mainly short strokes, to make it look like fur. For the second layer of the wing, I decided to make a cooler shade because I noticed the shadows look bluish and so I cover it up. I'm just trying to fill in the correct value and color but at the same time defining the outline. Then I use an even darker shade of grey for the inner part of the wing and also add a transition shade to smooth it out between the two greys so that the gradient there's a gradient at the bottom length. I use a really light grey, it almost looks like white but it's not to highlight the edge of the wing because it's facing upwards when the light hits and I use very short strokes to make it look like feather. I added some warm colours like yellow and orange on the wing to indicate reflections of the angel's skin. And then I moved back to the cloth bringing out the values and shape to make it look like a fabric. So I further defined the details of the wings with a small brush and mainly focusing on the shadow part and also the highlight. And finally, it's the crown. I'm not sure what it is but it looks beautiful so I decided to keep it in this painting. I use only light yellow and small brush to do it. So this is the final painting for day 18 wing. Hello gorgeous, it's my turn now for the voiceover. I think we haven't mentioned on our YouTube channel that this is run by two person. If you watch our previous vlog videos, you can see there's two of us. If you haven't already, check it out. Uh, it's our like more casual fun vlog so there will be two very different approach to painting because there's two person I'm um, new by the way before this was Mel's painting this is day 19 and the prom was boots and I don't really want to paint just boots because that will be boring to me so I added animals again So at first I'm just blocking out where the placement will be and I block in the colours. Not going into any details yet, I just want to know where things go and how much space it would take up and the colour and the value and I want to make sure the colour and the value was right. I apologise for the weird angle because at the time of filming I don't have a proper tripod yet and the lighting was really bad too because I'm using oil and you can see it's reflecting the lights from the ceiling so you can't really see what I'm painting I'm really sorry it will get better in the future video and because of the light reflection I will show more painting process of the left side of the boots and rabbits because you can really see the right side because of the reflection but the process are basically the same because they are the same thing I am now putting in the darkest value of the boots after I put down the basic color of everything and the background I started to work on the details of the boots I think the boots is the most challenging part of this painting because I want to capture the texture of the boots which is leather I never really painted leather before and 
at the same time also I want to capture how worn out it is. It's not a brand new boot. There's scratches and marks all over it but I also want to keep the painting very loose. So I have to really see in big shapes and only paint what's necessary. Instead of going into every single scratches I see, I try to just capture the essence of it. I try to make it seem worn out without really actually painting the scratches. So I'm just really painting the big shapes. I think the good thing with working with oil is that when it comes to blending, it blends really well on canvas and this made it easy for me to paint the fur of the rabbits blending the colors between dark and light and also blending the fur into the background here you can see I'm putting in the colors and the value of the rabbit starting with the edge and slowly adding more darker shades and finally the shadow part of the rabbit Carefully blending all the colors together with the small brush so I can make it look more fluffy. By this point, I'm trying to finish up the blocking of the big shape so I can proceed with the smaller shapes. Now that I've got all the values and shape in place, I can I can move on to details. Like I said previously, I don't I want to keep the painting loose, so I didn't go into that much of a detail. I was just messing around with color, adding in highlights, pushing the contrast between the shadow and the light. Here I'm making the highlight of the fur and blend it into the background a bit more so it doesn't look like it's paste onto the background like a sticker and then I move on to the boots adding darker shadows and highlight to make it stand out even more I notice the overall painting is very dark with the dark background and the dark boots so I put a really bright highlight for it to pop I also added some lighter shades of brown to indicate the scratches and marks on the boots but still seeing them in their big shapes and I use a bit more of a dry paint, lesser oil to create some texture with the brushwork. Finally I went back with the final detail of the highlights to finish off with the painting. So that's it, that's day 19, boots. Next is day 20, spaceship. I added the canvas preparing process into it because I think to me this part is really satisfying to watch. I went straight into color for this painting because there isn't really much going on in this piece subject wise it's just clouds and smokes and a tiny rocket in the middle so I don't really have to sketch out anything I had a lot of fun painting this one because there's no right or wrong when it comes to cloud and smokes what I mean is I don't have to make it exactly into a specific shape because cloud and smoke has very abstract shapes and you can still tell it's a cloud even if I didn't follow my reference exactly. So with less concern on the shapes, I focus more on the colors. There's just so much going on with the colors which I really really like. I really like playing with the colors and I never really notice how much color there is going on in the sky and I think it's really interesting. I made the outer part of the painting darker to create like a vignette effect. You know where you edit your picture, you can edit like a darker frame to it 
yeah that's what I'm trying to do so the focus will be on the middle of the painting I really like that the painting has almost every single color that is in the world there's blue, orange, yellow, purple, red, different kind of red it just made the painting so interesting to look at and working with oil also gives me the benefit to blend colors on canvas so I can create the subtle shift between the clouds by rubbing my clean brush in between two colors to create like a really soft blending then I got my smallest brush to work on the main character of this painting the rocket I keep it really simple just the shape and almost no detail because it's just too small to go into detail so I focus more on the value like the shadow and the light I wanted the smoke to be the main highlight of the painting instead of the rocket well they are basically connected and basically considered as one thing but I want to make sure the end of the rocket where it shoots out the smokes to be the highlight the main subject so I use the lightest color to make it stand out it will be the lightest value in this painting and it goes all the way down to the lightest part of the smoke which also makes the smoke stands out I basically use the same technique I use on the clouds for the smoke I was playing with colors, didn't really focus too much on the shapes and blending them out smoothly between colors but to make sure the smoke and the clouds are two different things and make the smoke stand out even more from the cloud I make the left side of the cloud where it's touching the smoke lighter to create contrast so now you can tell where the smoke ends and where the clouds begin Then I continue to do some final touch up and play with more colors. I add in more variety of colors into the clouds. And yeah, that's it. That's the painting. Day 20, Spaceship. Thank you so much for watching our video and stay to the very end. I hope you like this new editing style we are trying on this video. Let us know if you have any thoughts about the painting or the editing style in the comments so we can better improve ourselves. Remember to subscribe. We will see you again in our next video. Bye bye.